Welcome back to No Man's Sky, everyone. Jason here, and the new expedition is out. We are playing the awesome new expedition that came with the Fractal Update. Just came out on Wednesday, so let me show you how to start a brand new expedition. So you're going to want to go to a new game. You have to start a new game. You can't do it from a existing save. Let's go to a new game. And there we go. Expedition 9 Utopia. You have six weeks to do it. So it'll go through the entire month of March. So you have all of March to get this done. Not a time crunch. You don't have to worry about speed running this or anything. I mean, unless you're watching this really late in the game, then maybe you want to speed run it. But as of right now, you have a lot of time to do it. So let's jump into it. Now, a, an expedition in No Man's Sky is actually a different play style of No Man's Sky. They will start you out on a specific planet. They will give you starting equipment and everyone starts out with the same exact equipment and they will give you special objectives that you have to do during the course of the expedition. And as you complete these objectives, you will earn rewards that you can use on any of your other saves, which is really, really awesome. So let's jump into this one. Initialize. Yes. And it starts out just like a brand new save in No Man's Sky. So you're going to kind of do the uh, warm up of, hey, this is where everything's going. There you are. You kind of get a peek of what the planet looks like when you first start out. Very, very cool. But yeah, like I said, there are special objectives that they want you to complete. And you don't have to do them in any particular order. So if you think you could do something, you know, like way down the list, you can try to get that done first. But they kind of put them in an order to make it easier for you to follow. So I would always recommend, especially new players, go through the order that they give you because it's kind of easy to do it that way. Easier to do it that way. And you'll get a randomized multi-tool. You know, yours might not look the same as me. Your character might not look the same as mine. So that's my character, Expedition 9 Utopia. There we go. So the first thing I want everybody to do is go over to your options go to your network setting and make sure you have pvp turned off by default it'll be anybody can shoot you and you don't want that to happen so turn that off and then if you want anything like if you want to play multiplayer turn that on you can enable it or you can disable it if you want to play it solo you can totally do this solo so i'm going to play this solo just to show you that it can be done on your own or you can do it with a group if you want to so now the other thing you want to do is, in your main menu, go to your Expedition tab. And these are your special missions that you have to do, your special objectives that they want you to do. And again, you don't have to do it in order. You can do it in any way you want. But the first thing they want you to do is establish a base. And lucky for us, they give you a base computer from the get-go. So you don't have to worry about building one on your own. They give you one to start out with. So let's build one right over here. So in order to build your base, you're going to need to go up on your D-pad, press the up on your D-pad, and it'll bring up your building menu. Hit the base computer, select that, and now you can put it anywhere you want. So we're going to put it down right there. Oh yeah, listen to that music. Then once you have it placed, you need to clean the area you're in. So searching Utopia Foundation Settlement Archives. Utopia Archives reveals no prior settlement attempts on this site. So only one person can claim a single site. So you need to make sure there's no other bases around you. If there is a base, it won't let you claim it. You have to make sure you're the only one claiming it. There you go. And now we need to build a base. Not only do we have to put down a base computer, we need to build a building to kind of survive in. So that's, that means we're going to have to build some stuff. So go to your build menu again, up on your D-pad. And over here, this one right here, that second tab, this is all your uh, wooden structures. But we're going to need some carbon in order to build any of the stuff. So I would run around and destroy some of these plants. Mine the plants and you will get carbon from doing that. And you get different materials from different things, of course. Let's grab that, grab this. Now, you'll see it says unidentified. Once you identify it, you'll get special materials from it. But because we cannot identify it yet, we won't worry about that. So what you need to do if you want to identify it is 
over in your multi-tool, your multi-tool uh, tab over here. This is your uh, multi, your your tool that you can use to mine and and scan things. So we need to install a scanner. So we're gonna press A or uh, X if you're on a, uh, PlayStation. And then, oh, we don't have a scanner. Oh no, we don't have a scanner. That's fine. We'll wait for that, I guess, because we're gonna probably get it with our next objective. So we have some uh, stuff we can make. So let's do that. Let's make some floorboards for our building. There we go, floor. I like to make a, a square hut. You can make it whatever you want. So now I have my full floor down. I'm going to build up my walls. So you need to make a structure that is considered a building. It doesn't have to be a square or anything like that. You can build whatever you'd like, but it needs to have a floor, walls, and a roof. So we're going to back out of that. We need some more, uh, you know, materials. So that's why I'm going to mine some of these. Come on. There it goes. I'm going to grab this. We should grab some of this as well. Some ferrite dust. You know, you need some minerals, some rocks and things like that. Need that. All right. So let's see if we can build some more walls around here. And if you want to, this is your normal, your default camera. But if you click in your left thumbstick, you go into a build camera, which is free. You can actually move around even more. So I like using the build camera to do all this stuff. So we're going to make a wall there. All right, so we have our walls, but we want a doorway, right? So a doorway will cost you extra resources. We don't have that. So we're instead, we're going to build an archway. So it won't protect you from any animals walking in, but it kind of, you know, gives you a, still at least a little bit of a protection. And then normally you'd build a roof right here, right? A round timber roof, but you don't have to do that. Instead, the easier way to do that is just build a carbon floor as your roof so it is still it protects you from the elements if there's a a covering above your head and that's all that matters so now we have a roof there you go established a base we are good we made a base even though you know the floor is on the roof that's fine it covers your head that's all that matters so now that we've done that we need to collect our reward for doing that milestone Prepackaged personal refiner, copper, and analysis visor plans. Okay, so now we can make our visor. So I was trying to make it too fast. So now what we can do is we can install the visor, but we're going to need nanotubes to do that. And you can make nanotubes in your suit. So in order to make a nanotube, you're going to need 50 carbon. Again, we're going to get some plants going on here. So let's get some more plants. Let's grab that. And boop. That should be enough. There we are. We need a carbon nanotube right there. So now we can install it. So it's 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 in there, but it's not built completely. We need to fix it all the way. So now we have a uh, scanner. So now we can scan different things. Like we can scan this plant. We'll get a little bit of money. But the bigger thing is you'll get secondary materials. You see how this says unidentified mineral? And it says in smaller letters, ferrite dust. And below that, it says analyze. It'll give you a second material, but only if you scan it. So we need to scan this thing. Boom. There you go. So now I'm going to get two different materials out of this thing when I mine through it. Very, very cool. Very necessary. You need to do this. So we have that. Now, what's our second objective? Craft essential items. We need to make our bolt caster so we need to make a weapon to protect ourselves so what we need to do is go through our menu in our multi-tool our weapon we can install bolt caster right here but we need chromatic metal and carbon nanotubes so we don't have either one of those so we can't really do anything with it but what we can do is we were gifted 200 copper which will give us the necessary chromatic metal but we need to install our personal refiner our backpack refiner the best addition to No Man's Sky. So we put that down. Now we need to ins we need to refine our copper. So we'll take our copper, put it over here on this side to refine it, but we need fuel to run it. So we'll put our co carbon in there. There we go. We'll turn it on and they'll start making chromatic metal. But we also need a lot more carbon in order to make our carbon nanotubes to finish off our tool, our bolt caster. So let's grab that. Oh, unidentified. Let's scan this thing and see if we get secondary good stuff out of it. We're going to get oxygen out of there. That's good. Heck yeah. 
the other thing we're going to need to do is pick up these blue crystals right here. The dihydrogen crystals. We need to pick up a lot of those. So whenever you see them, pick them up. Let's grab more. And there we go. So that should be enough. So now we need to take all of our chromatic metal out of our um, backpack refiner. Let's grab the uh, carbon nanotubes. We need to make three of them. There we are. So now we can make our bolt caster. There we are. We have all the ingredients we need. Perfect. But now what we need to do is we need to make bullets for that. We need to make ammunition. And so let's make ammo. That's going to be in our menu as well. Let's go down here. You're going to need 50 ferrite dust. Luckily, I already mined it. So there you go. Let me grab that. We're going to grab some more of this. What else do we need? We need to make more. Um, we're going to need to make life support gel. Okay, we need to make life support gel, you guys. So that's the next thing. So we need those blue crystals. The other thing you can do is as you're running around, if you click in your left thumbstick, it'll do a scan and you want to look for the blue H. That's dihydrogen crystals right there. So we need a whole bunch of these. So let's grab these. We're going to need a lot of them, so don't be shy. Grab a whole bunch of it. You're, you're farming for later on. Not just for this. You're farming for later on for everything else as well. So we should have enough there. There we go. So let's make a jelly. We made a jelly. So now, if we make a life support shell, we need carbon and jelly. We need 100 carbon and one jelly. So we need a little bit more of this carbon right here. So let's pop this thing. And again, you're gonna be want you're you're gonna want to farm this as you're going. So I'm going a little bit fast. You can just kind of walk slowly and and farm up all the materials you want. If you want to clear out this whole area and get all the uh, the plants and the rocks all done, you can totally do that as well. So up, oh, I re overheated my uh, my mining beam. You see how it's green right now? The beam is green. And then as we go along, it'll turn yellow and then orange and then red. You want to keep it around orange, maybe even a little bit red. Because as your mining beam gets hotter, it'll actually mine faster. So it's a hot beam. The problem is, if it's overheated, it'll have to shut down completely. So you don't want to overheat. You just want it to be hot. All right. So we should be able to make a life support shell now. There we go. Done and done. So there you go. We made the essential items we need to live. So again, we're going to go to our milestones and we're going to collect that real quick. We have a, our new base parts. This is a reward we got for completing that milestone. We also got ion batteries, life support shells, and a mining beam upgrade. We got an upgrade. So let's install that upgrade while we're here. So we have this mining beam upgrade right there. It needs to go in your multi-tool with your mining beam stuff. This needs to go over here. I like to move my stuff around because you'll notice there's a green box around it. If I move it down here, and if you want to move anything, you press X on uh, Xbox controller or square if you're on PlayStation. You have to just use X and it'll pick it up and you can put it wherever you want in your multi-tool. But you want the similar items to be linked together. So I want my mining beam to be next to my mining beam upgrade. So there you go. That's why there's a green square. That's how you know you're getting a little bit of a bonus because they're all adjacent. They're all connected. So you want to do that. Now our next one is going to be upload the base to uh, Utopia. So now that we have a base, we need to upload it into the servers in order to complete this milestone. So what you can do is you can rename your bases if you want to. So if you click on the pencil, you can name it whatever you want. Jason base number one. And then you need to come down here and upload the base. That way everyone else can see it in multiplayer. So now if you come to this exact part of the planet, you'll see Jason base number one right here. Very, very cool. And so we did that. We got our milestone done. Let's grab that. So we got paraffinium. We got a prepackaged advanced mining laser and geo base. We got our exocraft units right here. So there you go. And now our next one is to deploy an exocraft. We just got those blueprints. So up on your build menu, press up on your D-pad, 
And you can choose whichever one you want. So we have that. Uh, oh, actually, we can't do the Pilgrim Bay because we need other materials for that. But we can make the uh, Colossus Geo Bay or the Nomad Geo Bay. I like the Nomad one, but we're going to need some metal plating. Again, we're going to need a lot more materials. So let's grab these rocks. We're going to need ferrite dust. Let's grab that. Let's grab. Oh, wait a minute. That's a rock. Oh, God. That's a living crab guy. Okay, we don't want to do that. Oh, let's grab all these ones. And so I'm going to mine and get a whole bunch of materials. So I'm going to give you guys, a, or give me a minute and I'll be right back. All right, guys, I've mined a lot, but I realized I got a, a, a reward I didn't use. So we got an advanced mining laser upgrade. I did never installed it. So we need to do that. Let's install it up here because the advanced mining laser will let you mine the more hardcore stuff like this pure ferrite right here. This rock. I normally wouldn't be able to mine, but because I have an advanced mining laser, it'll give me pure ferrite and I'll be able to mine it with it. So that's why you want to install and check all of your rewards whenever you uh, complete a milestone. You gotta pay attention. I was not paying attention to that at all. All right, so now we're gonna need some metal plating. So you need to be close to your computer in order to do this because let me show you what happens if you're not close enough. If you're too far away from your base, it will not let you construct any items. So we're all the way out here. This should be far enough. Let's go a little bit farther just to make sure we're doubly out here. So if I try to build anything, like I need metal plating, right? If I try to build a metal plating. Oh man, I'm too, I'm still close enough. Okay. Am I still 300? Oh, 213. Okay. If you're too close to it, you can still do it. But anyway, anyway. You need to be close to your base in order to build items. So I want to make sure you guys know that. I was going to try to show you, but I'm still too close away. If you're within 300 feet, you're okay. After 300, you're kind of screwed. All right, we're going to need five of these. So we're going to make... Uh, we'll make nine because we're going to need more later on. And I'll explain that later on when we get there. So we made those. So now we need to make our Nomad Geo Bay right here. There we are. So I'm going to get in my Nomad. So we are in our awesome, awesome uh, Exocraft. These are basically your ground vehicles in No Man's Sky. Most people ignore them, but they're really cool. They give you extra stuff. But before you leave, go up on your D-pad, press X if you're on Xbox or uh, Square if you're on PlayStation, and it allows you to delete this item. If you delete it, you get back all your materials and you keep your uh, Nomad. Look at that. Boom. That'll let us build that uh, platform anywhere we want. So you want to you want to do that so you can build it later on. All right. So now we know how to make a hermetic seal, and we we got some other materials. We also got an upgrade for our exocraft, condensed carbon, and powerful movement upgrade. So before we go anywhere, I'm gonna put my jetpack upgrade. Well, let's number one. We're gonna move our hazard protection. We're gonna put our jetpack upgrade next to the other jetpack. Again, you want to put uh, similar upgrades together. We also have the engine upgrade for our uh, exocraft. So let's put that here. And you see these like colored squares? These are supercharged slots. So if you want to, you want to make sure they're all, you know, being used. So right now, let me show you what that does. Fuel usage is down 19% and top speed is increased by 13%, right? But if you put it in a supercharged slot, that jumps up. So now... 35 and 41 percent that's why you want to do that 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 really helps you out so you definitely want to use these supercharged slots if you can so the other thing we don't want to do is we have metal plating we have we need to make our hermetic seal since we're at our base make that hermetic seal we also need to make some dihydrogen uh jellies so we're going to make a whole bunch of those and now we should be okay we should be okay with all this stuff now so now what we're going to do is we need to go locate and repair our starship. So if you look around, you'll see your starship notification. Oh, right over there. That's our starship. Seven minutes away. But if we get in our vehicle, it'll be even faster. So now we're going to be driving. Now we're only two minutes away because your vehicle, your exocraft, can actually drive faster or go faster than you can on foot. So let's head on over here. And a lot of people, they don't use their exocraft. I don't know why. I mean, I generally don't because I have a ship. And I mean, maybe that's the point they want to do in this expedition. They want to 
show that the Exocraft are really, really cool. But you want to use this because we need to go a certain distance in an Exocraft. So let's keep going over here. But yeah, so you can also upgrade your Exocraft. You can add a laser. That way you can mine while you're in here. You can upgrade the speed. Like, I only have one upgrade on there, and it's going pretty fast. You can add a whole bunch of upgrades to speed this thing up so it goes crazy fast. So, theoretically, and then also later on in the game, not in the expedition, but in the game, you can also get upgrades for your freighter so you can call in your Exocraft anywhere you are. You don't have to worry about putting down the platform. Now, in this expedition, they don't let you have a freighter, so you can't really do that. But in the main game, once you get a freighter, you can get upgrades to allow you to call in any Exocraft anywhere you want, which is really, really cool. All right, travel 2,000 feet by Exocraft. That's what we wanted. And we got right to our ship. That's freaking awesome. We timed that perfectly, you guys. So now we're here, right? The thing is, like, watch this. If I wanted to fix my, my ship, I would have to make a metal plating, right? If I wanted to make, or we'll say Hermetic Seal. And it says, sorry, you're outside of your base. Look at that. Boom. We'll do it again. Outside of the Utopia base. So you can only build items when you're in a base. That's why I did it while I was back there. <laughs> I didn't want to get stuck out here in the cold and have to go all the way back. I've done that before. You don't want to do that. It's a pain in the butt. And it's a pain in the butt to make a base anywhere. It costs a lot of resources to make a base on your own. That's why you don't want to leave a base unless you have made a whole bunch of materials that you're going to use later on. All righty. So now that we're here, let's uh, get into our ship. Welcome, Utopia Settler. Welcome to the Utopia Foundation Communal Habitation Project. An industry in this system has been disrupted. Space station trade has fallen into recession. Manufacturing efficiency has been reduced by 83.98%. Let us work in harmony. Rebuild, renew, restore. Together we can construct a new civilization. Utopia takes the very best care of all settlers. Okay. So now we need to fix it. We have our launch thruster damaged. We all, we have those materials. And then we need to we need to fix our launch thruster and our engine. That way we can get off. Thankfully we made all this beforehand. L hopefully you did as well before you left your base. So we have 50 pure ferrite. And our dihydrogen jelly. There we are. And the same thing for your pulse engine. You need a hermetic seal, which we made. And the metal plating, which we already made. So yeah, there you go. That is that milestone done. We fixed our ship. Let's fix it. Boom. We get our, uh, our upgrades from there. All of our rewards. We got some fuel. There we are. But we also, we also traveled 2,000 feet in our Exocraft, so we got that one done. Let's grab that as well. Prepackaged Icarus uh, fuel system, yes. Uh, Supreme Exocraft engine upgrade. There we go. So we got stuff for our Exocraft. So before we leave, our Exocraft is right here. Let's install some of this stuff. So launch thruster module, that's for our ship. We need to install that. Let's move this engine around, or this rocket launcher around. Again. Launch thruster. You want to make it sure it's right next to the other launch thruster. We have a engine upgrade for our Exocraft. So let's do that. So now our Exocraft goes even faster. Loving it. And then what else did we get? We got a, a Icarus fuel system. Uh, this reactive fuel energy uh, during the day. Offsetting fuel consumption. Okay, so it actually improves your fuel usage for your engine. So now, look at that. It'll automatically recharge your engine during the day. So you don't have to keep putting gas in there. Because, like, like, what? We're at 91%. It doesn't use that much gas or fuel. But it'll recharge it automatically during the day. It has to have sunlight out there. And then we got this suspicious packet. And it has a suspicious movement. So this is a jetpack upgrade. We'll take that. That way we can use our jetpack even more. Beautiful. And we are rocking and rolling, you guys. We're getting this done real fast. So our next one is we have to get to the uh, settlement, the first planet right there. So let's do this. Now that our ship is fixed, we can go fly wherever we want. And another quick bonus I want to tell you guys is while you're flying, you can get resources off the ground. So if you shoot the ground like this, you will collect everything you destroy. So look at that. I got a whole bunch of carbon. I got a whole bunch of dihydrogen. 
You can also use your rockets if you want. Just don't shoot yourself. But yeah, look at that. We're just going to collect all this stuff off the ground. Definitely a big advantage. You want to do this. Just kind of do some like uh, some strafing runs. Just kind of shoot the ground a little bit and collect anything off the ground you can. So definitely want to do that. It's a huge benefit. It'll help you later on when you're trying to build stuff and you need materials. Instead of going out and mining it manually with your multi-tool, you can just do this and pick up a whole bunch of materials. There you go. Yeah. Here we go. And we can check. It's all in our, uh, in our, sh our ship inventory. And you'll see, every once in a while, you'll get a geode. That comes out of the rocks. But if you scan, analyze it, you scan it, it'll give you more materials. Boom, there you go. Same thing for crystal fragments. This comes from the dihydrogen, the blue ones. There you go. Easy peasy. Very, very cool. And how far away is this? Two hours away. Well, I don't want to go. I don't want to fly for two hours like this. That'd be crazy. And I don't think you guys would watch me and listen to me for two hours. Maybe you would. But, you know, I, I start to jibber-jabber a lot. So instead of doing all of that, what we're going to do is we're going to fly up in the atmosphere. That way we can pulse drive over to the location we need to go to. So once you get up into space, you can actually hone in on that and pulse drive. And it locks in on where you want to go. So there we are. Easy peasy. It makes flight way faster to do that. And now, instead of two hours, it's 17 seconds. <laughs> very, very quick. Very, very fast and easy. Let's get down in here. Get through the cloud. There we go. And we can also shoot the ground. Oh, that missed the ground. I don't know how that happened, but okay. So this is going to... The outpost alpha is going to mark the general location. What you want to do is you want to look for a building nearby. Because that's actually where you want to go. So in this case, the building nearby is going to be this big planetary archive so of course you want to come over here and land right there um anywhere right on that platform and again if you don't want to fly, fly in first person you can go to the gear icon in your quick menu and you can switch your uh, view to third person if you want to oh man that was a terrible parking job terrible parking job but yeah there you go that's where we need to go right over here outpost alpha so let's head on in here Let's get this one done. Outpost Alpha. Welcome to Utopia Outpost Alpha, Settler. Please identify yourself using this terminal to complete planetary registration. Let's log in. Verifying Settler or credentials. Login successful. Utopia thanks you for your prompt registration. Please proceed to Outpost Beta to receive details of your next restoration assignment. All right, so we did that. We completed Outpost Alpha easy enough so let's accept that reward real fast so we got fireworks we also got an increase in our inventory and we have 1200 nanites very very cool and they'll automatically let you increase the inventory space in your suit so we're gonna do our general so our cargo you can upgrade your technology if you want to but we have enough room for now so we'll do our general there it is and we also got a planetary chart. So we need to use this in order to find the next location. There we go. Ancient ruin site detected. So we have that. Easy enough. Oh, wait a minute. We have to, we have to accept our reward. So as you complete the phase, like we completed all the milestones in this phase, you'll get a phase reward. The first phase is going to be posters. That way, when you build a base, you can put posters up. Very, very cool. There we go. Done and done. And then, if you go to phase two, we have to go to second outpost beta. Right there. Outpost beta right there. And it marks it. There is a location right over there off planet. So, it's on a different planet, you guys. So, hopefully, you guys liked this episode. If you did, hit that like button. And I will see you in the next episode when we get to the second phase and outpost beta in No Man's Sky. So I'll see you guys then.